Okay, so let's see now how we can replace these uh, colors here with images by using some icons here. I have some free icons here on my desk that I can use. So let's see how we can do that. So let's go back to Visual Studio and go to Solution Explorer. Find the tic-tac-toe.rc file. This is the resources file. And double click on it to open up the resource view. Then you're going to want to go to icon folder. And here, right click on the icon folder and say add resource. So we get this uh, add resource dialog. Now, on make sure that you have the icon uh, option highlighted and then click import. And I'm going to go to my folder. Here. And make sure that you have the icon files selected from the drop down. Okay, I'm going to pick this one and say open. Okay, so this is my first icon. And I'm going to call this icon here back on the right. By default, Visual Studio gave it IDI icon 1. I'm going to just name that IDI player 1. Now we're going to do the same for player 2. Right click icon folder, add resource, click import, and same folder again. Uh, right click. And then make sure that you have the icon files selected. And this is what I'm going to use for second player. Okay, so now here again on the right, it's called IDI icon 2. Let's change that name to player 2. So IDI player 2. Hit enter. We're good. Let's close this icon, close this other icon, and go back to our cpp file which is tic-tac-toe.cpp okay so the first thing we want to do is see how we can load the icons from the resource file so to do that we need to define two new global variables go back to our global variable section here just like we have the hbrush1 hbrush2 we need to have h icon h icon1 h icon2 so the H stands for a handle. So we need to have a handle to an icon. This is the Windows API way. We need to have two icon handles in here. These are two global variables. Now we go to see how we can load them. The best place to do that is going to be when we, when we create our window. If you remember, that's going to be WM create because we receive WM create message whenever a new window is created. And since this is our main application window, this is a good place to load player icons. So we're going to say handle to icon1 equals, there's a load icon API, if you guess that right. And it takes as first parameter the handle to the module that contains the, the icon. So in this case, the, mo the module that contains the icon is our exe. So how do we get that handle? Well, if you look at the, if you scan the code that was produced by the wizard here, the global variable each ins is the handle to the instance of this application. So this is what we want. So let's copy that, go back to WM create. And here, put this here, and then Next is going to ask you for a string that refers to the resource. Remember here on the resource view, we don't actually, we did not identify these as strings. We have defined them as integers. So how do we turn that into actual strings? Well, there's a macro that we can use here. It's called make int resource. This makes an integer resource into a string. So we say IDI layer one. So this should do it. Not sure why it's still showing the squiggly line. Let's compile. Control Shift B to compile. 
Okay, so that's just because I think that the IntelliSense in the editor that doesn't know yet about this new variable. So it probably will just go away, ignore it for now. So copy for the second icon and here name it IDI player two. So now we have the two icons loaded. So now then the first question that should come to your mind is whenever you create, load something, right? Open a file, allocate memory. The first question should be when do I need to, you know, dispose of this? When do I need to uh, free that memory for that the resource is using? So since we are doing this on WM create, so the best place to do actually get rid of this is to go to WM destroy. That's when we close the window. And so let's look for WM destroy. Probably here at the bottom. Okay. So here what we want to do is we want to say destroy icon for the first icon and destroy icon for the second icon. So this is how we dispose of icon images by using these two function calls. So destroy icon just gets rid of it. It doesn't delete the file or anything. It just deletes that object in memory. So we're good in terms of resource management. Now let's see how we can actually draw and show the icons. So the first place we want to look at is when we click on a cell and that's exactly right here, right? If you guys remember, here we actually, when we click, this uh, player will take over that cell and we draw either a blue or red brush. So instead of this, let's just comment this out. What I want to do is I want to do something like this. There's a, a Windows API, guess what? It's called draw icon, right? And this takes a DC handle. It takes a left and right. Let's say that left, uh, sorry, position for X, position for Y. The top and based on the player, we should either, it's player one, we should display icon one. Layer two, we should display icon two. So this is the first place we wanna do this. Let's just try this quickly because I think uh, since there's two places, I wanna turn this into a function. So let's just give it a quick try. Control F5, compile and run. So now if I click, you can see now, I'm actually drawing icons. Oh, and I have a winner, cool. So this is good. However, the icons are showing at the left top of each cell. I would really want to show them in the middle, right? So that means there's no way right now with that API to say, center this inside this rectangle. So instead, we want to do this ourselves. That's the first thing we want to fix. The second thing is, of course, is when we paint, we still have to change that code to show the icon as well. So let's make these changes. Okay, so back here in the code, I'm gonna copy this line. Or not really need to copy it, but what I really need is something like this. I wanna create a function that's called draw icon centered, right? We give it the HDC, and if we give it our cell handle and we give it the icon handle, then this should be good enough of a function. So let's, let's try to create a function like this. Go all the way up outside this uh, window proc, and here let's create a draw icon centered function. It takes an HDC and it takes a rectangle pointer, and in this case, we want to say P rect, and then it takes an icon handle H icon. So, this should be a generic function, it doesn't really care if it's player one or player two. It just takes a rectangle. So if the rectangle is not null, just to protect against accessing a null pointer, what we want to do now is we want to say uh, integer left and integer top, right? We want to see, calculate the left and top for our icon. So we say, Rect. If you remember, it has right minus p rect. The left 
that will give us the width of the window or of this rectangle cell. This is the width and we want to subtract from that width the icon width. So we don't have an icon width, but let's say it's 32. Assume it's 32. There's a better way to do this. I don't like hard coded numbers. So, so if we subtract that, I'm sorry, this is a typo here. We do this, then we can get the middle point. I'm not happy about. Okay, so this gives us the center point inside the rectangle, but we want to start this off from the left, adding to it this uh, center point. So this should do it. And then similarly, we do the same for the top, which is, we can call it instead of left and top, X and Y, but top plus e left bottom minus right top so yeah so just by doing this along by two this will give us the center point of the rectangle but we know that we have to subtract from that Actually, the height of the icon, so this should do it. All right, so this should be. I'll, I'll come back to this in a minute and let's just test it first. And there's a better way to do this. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can just quickly now say a constant integer icon width equals 32, constant integer icon. Height equals 32. We can use the, this for now, but we can actually ask Windows to give us these values. And we'll do that in a minute. We'll draw icon. Now we want to draw the icon on HDC on left top. Our icon. <clears throat> so this should be the function. Okay, so now let's go back to where we call this function and the lift button down message. And I think it's here right now. It's looking good. Oh, sorry. Before I undo that, we actually would still want this logic, right? Because we want to pass either icon 1 or icon 2. So this is good to keep. So let's do it this way. And now let's copy the same call into the WM paint message because we're wherever we had it here somewhere here. Okay, so, so this is the same exact same code here, right? Instead of fill rect, comment it out, put this line here line here, and we just want to take the same logic that we have here. I'll just take this one and say, uh, because at this point we're looking at the each cell in the game board. If it's equal to two, let's switch this around. If it's equal to one, use icon one. If it's otherwise, use icon two. Okay. So this should do it. Let's run and see the icon centered. Okay, so click here. Click here, click here. So it doesn't actually follow your click. As long as you click inside, it's always going to be centered. Okay. So cool. But now this is uh, looking much better than the colors. I should, I think we should draw one icon here next to the player one, one icon here next to player two, so that each player knows which image belongs to them. Let's, let's do that. And before we do that, I think we should fix this uh, hard-coded uh, width and height. So let's go first fix the 
constant width and height. So this one actually I think we can call a Windows API called get system metrics. Get system metrics. And we can say SM system metrics CX icon. You can look it up on MSDN, but this is how it goes. So this says give me the fixed icon width and height is actually a CY icon. Okay, so now this constant is being obtained from Windows. You can keep it this way or you can make it static. It doesn't have to keep it this way. So this should be good enough that took care of their constant uh, 32. All right, so now we said next we want to show next to each player their image. That should be easy if we go down to the Leon Payne message. So remember here we draw at the beginning the text. We text out both player names and we can just get the same line here. Draw center text, copy that and somehow get it into this area. So for, let's paste it here. For the first player, remember here we don't have the cell rectangle, we have the client area rectangle, but this is gonna unfortunately center it in the middle of the window, which is not what we want. So forget the centered one. Let's just use the regular Windows API draw, draw icon that takes a top XY position. So, this is at 16, 16. We can potentially put this at, I'm just gonna guess here. Uh, let me think. Maybe 24, 24. And we know we wanna draw icon one, not using that. Logic. Okay, so now this is icon one. Now this is icon two. So similar to this guy here, it has to be relative to the right side. So let's make it 64, 64 maybe, and 24. It might be too close, but let's let's give it a try this way. All right. So it's. Yeah, it's pretty close, but I, I think I need to change this to icon 2. So first of all, this should be icon 2, not icon 1. So let's make this 32 on the Y position, 32. That should be maybe a little better. It's still too close. We can maybe give it a bit more space. You get the idea. It's just that you need to play with this until you get a satisfactory result. Let's say 40. 40 and call it good. All right, so 40, 40 it is. This is nice. So now each player knows, you know, like their their image. Oh, I just made player two win again, finally. And always winner, player one so far. Okay, so now player two is the winner. So now you can imagine if you want to add some more logic to it, you can basically add score. You can add anything else. One thing that I mentioned that I wanted to do, which is how do we highlight the winning move, right? Like this, it becomes easier to quickly figure out this is the winning move. Well, given the logic we have, it should be straightforward. Let's go back here. And if we maintain, if let's go back to lift button down, I think. It's fine, lift button down, okay, here. I think we can do the following. We can, if we have a winner, we can do this. Let's use this color. And we have a winner. Before we display the message box, we can say like this. For integer i equals zero, i is less than three, plus plus i. Remember that we have the 
three. Uh, the winds move, right? The the array of three. Correct RC when and say get cell rect match wind uh winds winds of i give me the rectangle of that cell into RC when and if this function succeeds then we fill that rectangle with a color rc cell rc when and then instead of player turn here we say winner right winner if winner is one we use brush one otherwise we use brush two so this will actually uh, erase the icon so we should actually after that say draw icon centered after we put the color in we should similarly say winner is one or one is winner use h icon one otherwise use h icon two all right and forgot to add the rc win Okay, so this should be it. Let's give it a try. Control F5, run. Let's pretend, okay, I'm gonna win. All right, so now, this is what I mean by highlighting. Now it's showing actually that player won. This is the winning move. So now if we repaint, this is gonna go away. I don't know if you want to keep it that way or if you really want to keep the highlight on. Let's assume we want to keep the highlight on. Let's just copy the same code and move it to WM Paint. Or how about if we make it a function? Do we want to make it a function? Let's just do that. Let's just say here show or highlight when a winner given match DC like show winner maybe given HDC was there anything let me just double check was there anything else we need oh we need the H wind as well the rest are global so H wind and HDC. So let's go back up here. Call a function show winner. Needs H wind, H wind, HDC, HDC. And we just paste that code in here. I think the H wind, I usually use a lower letter here. Okay, so this should be it. So now we can call this function also inside. WM paint because we already added it here to the WM left button down now let's go to WM paint and see where is the best place to do this so we draw all the blah 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 now we can say here show winner HDC so actually this is only if we need to make sure that this we only call this if winner is actually one or winner is actually two otherwise we don't want to <coughs> highlight anything okay so now let's run this make player two a winner all right so as you can see player two is the winner and it's using the other brush for that and it's oh still sticky doesn't go away so with this i think we have uh fully f you know game full game that's can be played now you can say new game yes please start a new game i'll leave it up to you guys to 
as an exercise to add score for players, but that should be straightforward, two global variables, and maybe you want to add something in the middle here that says, you know, game number one or two or third, etc. I keep track of that. And then maybe you want to, when you close the app, you want to store that to a file. You know, just whatever you, you know, take this and then make it as a base for your own game that you want to build and that should be it and thanks for watching thanks for watching please leave a comment or share with your friends don't forget to subscribe to my channel or like us on facebook see you in the next video